We were talking about the UFC show. Obviously, we were watching New Japan. We'll talk about the evil Naito match in a moment. But while it did not break records, it does look like the UFC 251 show this weekend. Allegedly, 1.3 million buys. I'm kind of skeptical of that number right now. Um, The ESPN number was a little under 900. So I don't know where 1.3 comes from. But... uh, you know, I mean, it could it could be over. I mean, if it's let's say eight seventy five, um, I mean, it could be with worldwide numbers one point uh, one. I could see that, um, and it's it's a great number, but I don't know where one point three. I mean, I don't. And I I mean, I was told one point three, but it doesn't it doesn't really add up. I mean, I've never heard of four hundred and twenty five thousand international buys i mean even for george st pierre when you have the big canada numbers never came close to that so um and it's not like um you know masvidal and usman are are big international stars so um it's it's i'm very skeptical of that number but um i you know have my theories but anyway um but yeah it did uh just under 900 in the United States, and which is good. It's very good. Um, yeah, it's not two million, but uh, it wasn't going to do two million. I think that was um, that was kind of a ridiculous prognostication. Um, it did. I, I think that's probably a little over what would have been expected. Not a lot over. I do think that UFC benefits greatly with all the sports bars shut down because. All those people in the sports bars, a great number of them would, are you know, they're, they want to see the show, so they're going to buy the show. So it actually, you know, if, if UFC never played in sports bars, I'll tell you what, the one thing that the pandemic has shown to me is that if UFC never played in sports bars, they'd probably make a lot more money because they don't, they make money off the sports bars. They make good money off the sports bars, but I don't think, I don't think that all the, that money um i don't know that it's it's the same as if all those people or a lot of the you know if you're adding let's just say you know on a show like this you're adding you know 200,000 buys or 150,000 buys that you wouldn't get before that's 150,000 buys is uh at $65 is close to 10 million right it's um hold on Yeah, just under ten million, nine point seven five million. So, um, that's a lot of money. Um, and you know, um, uh, Masvidal. I don't know what his cut was of this, but he is probably super happy because he got. You know, I mean, he signed for a big cut of the pay per view money. So, um, and he was responsible. I mean, I I'm sure that they are. What would I say? Probably, um, probably double what they would have done without him. I think so. He was, you know, he's proven to be a tremendous draw. You know, probably, probably number two draw in the company right now behind McGregor, um, or number one if McGregor's retired. But no one really believes that. So um, actually, you could make an argument for doing a McGregor. Uh, you know, McGregor and Masvidal fight uh, just to do it. Um, it would probably do with the build up and the talking and everything like that. That would do a giant number. Uh, that would do bigger than, um, uh, let's see, if, you know, I mean, McGregor could be, actually, I think McGregor could be, would do more, but it would do, but, um, and I think Masvidal probably wins that fight. So it hurts. It does hurt McGregor to a degree if he if he wants to do it. Um, but I could see I could see UFC going with McGregor and Khabib, which which is a bigger which that that is a bigger fight. Um, and then uh, where Masvidal goes, Masvidal has said that he won't fight Covington. Um, Covington and Masvidal is probably the best fight I could think of, other than you know unless you bring back George St Pierre um, for Masvidal which would be a good way to rehab him. I have no idea if George goes for that fight, though. I mean, he's been out for a long time, 
And uh, from his standpoint, I don't know that that's he needs he doesn't he has no need to come back for a fight like that with a guy who's, you know, in his prime and everything like that. I mean, George and McGregor, you know, would be a, a, a great fight. Um, I mean, a bigger drawing fight than that one. And they never got around to doing that one. So I think that George is pretty much done. So um, but yeah, it's a it's a great number. And, uh, you know, I guess pay-per-view is not dead after all. When was the first, when did they first tell you pay-per-view was dead? How many, I, I think we, like I a mean, decade for ago, sh- for sure. I mean, prior to the WWE network. So yeah, Long, it's probably even, been at least a decade, but he, well, WWE network's not been a decade. That's, that was what? 2014, well, 2012 when they first announced, when they first started. I mean, let me see here. I may be wrong by two years. I think it started around 2014. Let's see. Uh, the WWE Network officially launched, let's see, in 2014. Yeah, 2014. But the people were saying pay-per-view was, was a dying business long before that. And, I mean, they... They, you know, the the price for this thing it was it was sixty five dollars show, plus if you're not an ESPN Plus subscriber, it's another five. Although pretty much everyone, I think every UFC fan's an ESPN Plus subscriber at this point because you just sort of have to be if you're a UFC fan. So, um, you know, yeah, you're talking about um, and unlike with the the old pay per view model, I mean, the one thing that has happened, which really I think McGregor kicked in, is that. There was an aversion for the first several months from people when they switched from television to streaming because the numbers were, were terrible at, at first. Um, they were about half of what the um, television numbers were. But in time, you know, the people were going to get used to it. And I think like the McGregor fight with Cerrone was probably the one that was the one that really brought everyone in. And once you once you know how to do it and you, it doesn't daunt you anymore, then you're going to do it. You know, once you've done it once, you'll do it again. So now they're they're pretty much, I think, at that same level. And the difference now is, is that the cable companies aren't getting half of it. I mean, ESPN's getting it. And ESPN, as it turned out, you know, that $200 million that ESPN's paying a year uh, for that franchise is is looks like it's a deal because... Um, you know, this fight alone, if we say that this thing did 875,000 buys at, at $65, it's 57 million right there. So you're getting, and, and the whole year is only has to be 200. And I know there's other costs and things like that involved in this thing, but still, you know, you do three of those shows a year, three shows in that ballpark a year, and they've already done the Ferguson fight was a seven. Uh, the McGregor fight was over a million. So you've had three real big ones already, and you still got Cormier and Stipe, which is going to do very well. And, you know, who knows what they've got for the rest of the year. And the small ones, you know, ever since the pandemic started, the small ones are even doing good because, again, people don't go to sports bars anymore. And also, you know, if if it was five to eight people per household before, I'm not sure that that, we're, that number is nearly as high. And a lot of those people, are, you know, wind up being double, you know. Where you would might have five to eight people, maybe you get two buys instead of one out of them. So, um, yeah, I mean, everyone thinking that the pandemic was going to kill pay per view. It's as far as that aspect goes, it's actually been that's the, that's one industry where I think it's been the opposite and strongly. So uh, there you go. Um, but yeah, I think Cormier the Cormier Stipe fight is going to do real well next month too. 